River and Marine Processes for IGCSE Geography. Coastal Ecosystems. There are different types of coastal ecosystems, such as salt marshes, lagoons, mangroves, sand dunes, and of course, coral reefs. Mangrove swamps are tidal swamps which are dominated by mangroves. Mangroves are shrubs or small trees with numerous tangled roots that grow above the ground. Mangrove trees are salt tolerant. They contain a complex salt filtration system and a complex root system to cope with being immersed in salt water. Mangrove swamps are found along coastlines in tropical areas between 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south of the equator. They cover 60 to 75% of tropical and subtropical coastlines. Mangroves are tropical trees and shrubs which grow in the intertidal zone in low energy and relatively sheltered shallow coastal and estuarine environments. Mangrove swamps are one of the most productive and biologically important ecosystems in the world because they provide unique products and services to both people and coastal and marine systems. Mangrove swamps have three major roles. One, coastal protection. They help stabilize and protect shorelines and reduce the devastating impact of natural disasters such as tsunamis and tropical storms, hurricanes, cyclones and typhoons. Two, they are a breeding ground and a nursery. They provide breeding and nursing grounds for a wide range of marine and fish species such as fish, crabs, oysters, other invertebrates and wildlife such as birds and reptiles. Three, they are a source of food, medicine and raw materials. They provide food, medicine, fuel and building materials for local communities as well as the natural environment. Sand dunes are formed when smaller grains of sand are moved by the wind to the back of the beach. For this to happen, there needs to be a large sandy beach to supply the sand, a strong onshore wind to first dry out the sand and then transport it inland an obstruction to trap the sand, such as seaweed at the top of the beach. The sand will accumulate into a small dune about one meter high called an embryo dune. Pioneer species of plants, such as marm grass, will colonize the small dune. The roots and stems of these plants will trap more sand and speed up the process of deposition so that the sand builds up into a bigger mobile or yellow dune. As the process continues, the sand dune will increase in size and height to become a fixed or gray dune. Wind and waves can cause the sand dunes to become eroded over time. This erosion can cause the vegetation to fall away and expose the dunes, as you can see in the picture. Between sandbars and the shore, lagoons often develop. If the water in the lagoon is calm and fed by rivers, marshes and mudflats can be found. In these mudflats, vegetation starts to grow. These salt marshes continue to grow as more mud is trapped in the marsh by the vegetation. Apart from the different vegetation species, salt lake marshes are a food source and a habitat to various species of insect, animal and reptile. Coral reefs are often described as the rainforests of the sea on account of their rich biodiversity. Some coral is believed to be 2 million years old 
although most is less than 10,000 years old. Coral reefs contain nearly a million species of plants and animals, and about 25% of the world's sea fish breed, grow, and evade predators in coral reefs. Some of the world's best known coral reefs include Australia's Great Barrier Reef and many of the reefs around the Philippines and Indonesia. Coral reefs are calcium carbonate structures made up of reef building stony corals. Coral is limited to the depth where light can reach, so reefs develop in shallow water, ranging to depths of maximum 60 metres. This dependence on light also means that the reefs are only found where the surrounding waters contain relatively small amounts of suspended material. Reef building corals can only live in tropical seas where the temperature, salinity and clear water allow them to develop. There are many types of coral reef, but for the purpose of this video and for your IGCSC, you need to know about fringing reefs, barrier reefs and atoll reefs. Fringing reefs are those that fringe or encircle the coast of a landmass. Many fringing reefs grow along shores that are protected by barrier reefs and are characterized by organisms and species that are best adapted to low wave energy conditions. Barrier reefs occur at a greater distance from the shore than fringing reefs and are commonly separated from it by a wide, deep lagoon. Barrier reefs tend to be broader, older and more continuous than fringing reefs. The largest barrier reef system in the world is the Great Barrier Reef, which extends 1,600 kilometres along the East Australian coast, usually tens of kilometres offshore. Atoll reefs rise from submerged volcanic foundations. Atoll reefs are essentially indistinguishable in form and species composition from barrier reefs, except that they are confined to the flanks of submerged oceanic islands, whereas barrier reefs may also flank continents. Over 300 atolls are present in the Indo-Pacific, but only 10 are found in the Western Atlantic. Coral reefs face many pressures. The fishing industry now uses dynamite to flush fish out and cyanide solution to catch live fish. Destruction takes many forms, collection of specimens, trampling, birthing of boats, oil spills, mining, and the cement industry. Indirect pressures include sedimentation from rivers and waste disposal from urban areas. Coastal development, especially for tourism, is taking its toll too. Dust storms from the Sahara have introduced bacteria into the Caribbean coral, while global warming may cause coral bleaching. Bleaching occurs when high temperatures kill the algae in the coral, removing their colour so the coral appears bleached. Many areas of coral in the Indian Ocean were destroyed by the 2004 tsunami. This video was brought to you by Dara Cultural in collaboration with Language Rooms. For more content, follow us on all social media.